War, what is it good for? Well, the actual violence we could certainly do without, but to tell the truth, you'd be surprised at how many benefits can come from a war. Wow, that sounds wrong to say, but for real, just what are some of the great everyday items that we're so used to now that only came about from World War II? You'll learn all about that today on this video, so stick around to the end to find out. Cooking this first one up fast, we have the microwave oven. Bit of a surprise here, we've got a little bit of a two-for-one entry to start off the video. You see, while primitive radars were already in existence by the start of World War II, the conflict demanded the technology to advance at a much quicker pace, as well as being implemented on a much bigger scale than ever before. This paid off handsomely during the Battle of Britain in 1940, where it gave the British military early warning of German attacks. There were also attempts at weaponizing the radar tech, as scientists at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology were aiming to create electromagnetic waves that could hinder enemy planes. That did not come to pass, but their efforts likely pushed the boundaries of just how strong these things could be at the time. So, what's this got to do with microwaves? Well, it turns out that microwaves and radars aren't too far apart. Engineer Percy Spencer, one of the pioneers behind the World War II development of radars, would go on to find a household use for the technology after the war. So it goes that he was testing out a radar machine when the chocolate in his pocket began to melt. For you or me, that's a gigantic loss and a tragedy that'd send us into tears. But for a scientist, that's what they would call a light bulb moment. He began testing out putting different foods in close proximity to the machine and adjusted the electromagnetic wavelength that they were being exposed to. He continued until the waves were fairly small. You might call them miniature waves, perhaps. In 1945, Raytheon, Percy's employer at the time, filed a patent for the microwaving process, and two years later, they released the first ever commercial microwave oven. Fun fact, it said that the first food that Mr. Spencer deliberately cooked with his new microwave just so happened to be popcorn. Funny that bags of popcorn would still be one of the most regular uses of a microwave oven to this very day. Next up, we're a bit stuck on this one. It's super glue. The story is a bit funny. Like the first entry, it was discovered as a result of work during the war, but was largely developed afterwards. However, in this, it comes a bit full circle in the end, as you'll see. Anyway, one Dr. Harry Coover was looking to design clear plastic lenses for the sights of weapons in 1942. While testing various materials for this purpose, he came upon the chemical compound cyanoacrylate, but would reject it due to its extremely adhesive nature. But while it wasn't right for this particular invention, the doctor did keep it in the back of his mind, and nine years later, Coover and the others in the Eastman Kodak team looked into it again. This time, they were trying to create heat-resistant polymers for jet canopies. Once again, cyanoacrylates proved a little too sticky for the job, but only after a chemist had done serious sticky damage to an expensive refractometer did Coover realize that he'd inadvertently created a very unique adhesive substance. After seven more years of development, man, this one took a while, the company was ready to unveil the invention, first known as Eastman 910, but later changed to the more descriptive and frankly much more fun name of Superglue. While this obviously has no shortage of applications, it was actually first put to good use on the battlefield, as Superglue in spray form would go on to be used to seal the wounds of soldiers during the Vietnam War. See? Went right back to its origin there. War. War never changes, just gets a little stickier with time. And I'm afraid we're not leaving that subject quite yet, because our next wartime innovation is duct tape. Yes, that's right, you've been pranked. This was actually a video all about innovations in adhesives all along. During the Second World War, one Vesta Stout was toiling away at a munitions factory called the Green River Ordnance Plant in Dixon, Illinois. As she worked on the boxes of ammunition, she realized the flaw in them. While they were sealed very securely, they were actually a little too secure. If a soldier needed to open them in a hurry, they wouldn't be able to. Concerned, she sought to fix this herself, and her idea came down to sealing the boxes with a waterproof, terrible material. Ah, uh, that's to say a material that can be easily torn. She didn't want terrible tape as in awful tape. That wouldn't have helped much. She actually managed to create and test this on her own, and that's how duct tape came to be. However, her supervisors refused to implement the change at the factory, so she decided to take the classic route of going up the chain of command to get a second opinion. And in this case, that meant writing a letter directly to President Franklin D. Roosevelt himself about the issue. Yeah, back then, you could just do that kind of thing, I guess. Get right into contact with the leader of the country. Why not? An excerpt from her letter read, quote, I suggested we use a strong cloth tape to close seams and make a tab of the same. It worked fine. I showed it to different government inspectors and they said it was all right, but I could never get them to change the tape, end quote. Surprisingly, FDR not only actually read this letter, but approved of her invention and sent it to the War Production Board. The Revolite Corporation was tasked with creating duct tape en masse, and the rest is history. For our next invention, well, you may have heard of it. It's the electronic computer. Hear that quacking sound? The deafening, earth-shaking footsteps? This is the story of the Colossus. Ah, oh, wait, no. The Colossus isn't a mythological giant, but rather, it's the name of the first-ever programmable electronic digital computer. As you might guess, the Colossus got its name from its size. If you've ever seen one of those ancient computers, 
computers. These things took up whole walls of the rooms they were in. This was invented in Bletchley Park in Britain, and contrary to the name, this was not a park at all, but rather the headquarters of the country's top code breakers. It may have been a Bletchley, however. We can neither confirm or deny that one. This computer was created at the tail end of 1943, and its primary purpose was to decipher encrypted messages that the Nazis had sent each other using the Lorenz code. For espionage combating reasons, the existence of the Colossus machine and the many other prototypes made afterwards in its image were kept hush-hush until the 1970s and were eventually dismantled into such small pieces that their use couldn't be deduced. Somewhere along the way, the pieces may have even reached the same size as whatever device you're currently watching this video on. Sadly, the computer's greatest wartime use went underutilized in this era, which of course would have been bombarding the enemy with a barrage of spam emails. Last but not least, this one's a lifesaver. It's penicillin. One of the most important breakthroughs in the history of medical science, the discovery of penicillin, is credited to Scottish physicist and microbiologist Alexander Fleming in the midst of his experimenting in 1928. Thought to be one of few advertised miracle cures that actually did what it was supposed to do, penicillin's knack for staving off infections was quickly noticed. While this was, of course, several years before the start of World War II, just like the innovation of radars that we spoke of earlier, it was the war efforts that really took production and popularization of the world's first antibiotic into overdrive. This drug proved to be a real godsend on the front lines, and it's credited with greatly increasing survival rates of soldiers. Quickly, the military came to depend heavily on the stuff, as the United States incredibly manufactured more than 2 million doses of the drug whilst planning for the Normandy landings of 1944. The U.S. War Department famously referred to the need to mass-produce penicillin as a race against death. As with everything else we've talked about today, this innovation found its way into humble homes eventually. In this case, it went from saving the lives of soldiers to saving the lives of everyday folks. The creator, Alexander Fleming, was later quoted as saying, one sometimes finds what one is not looking for. When I woke up just after dawn on September 28, 1928, I certainly didn't plan to revolutionize all medicine by discovering the world's first antibiotic or bacteria killer, but I suppose that was exactly what I did." End quote. And that is all we have time for today. Which of these innovations surprised you the most? Will you ever be able to look at a roll of duct tape the same way again, now that you know of its origins from the battlefield? Are there any that we missed? Do let us know in the comments down below, and until next time, thanks for watching.